like this and make it go up, I'd have to animate it. So you'll notice next to position, there's this little stopwatch. And this basically is what enables you to animate stuff. So if I want to animate the position, all I have to do is click on this little stopwatch and it creates a keyframe. And you'll notice this little um, keyframe assistant, I guess, appears back here. And these two arrows allow you to go from one keyframe to another. So if I do that, uh, let's say that, and let's say that, well, you'll notice two things. One, actually, a few things. Eh, maybe two. Uh, you'll notice there's these weird lines that have been created. And second, you'll notice that when I click on these, I can go from one keyframe to the next. So ain't that neat. So I want to make the, the blue square, uh, the blue rectangle, go up. So to do that, I'd enable the position because that's what I want to animate. I don't want to make it bigger. I don't want to make it smaller. I don't want to rotate it. I just want to make it go up. So obviously it's position. And then go to where you want it to be up. So at this point, I'll just select a random time. But if you're making, like, let's say a gunshot or whatever, you obviously don't want the, the slide of the gun to slide for, like, a minute, obviously. Uh, so in this case, frames don't matter. That's what I'm saying. In most cases, the amount of time it takes to do certain things will matter. Um, so down here, if you look at these 8 frames, 16 frames, 20 frames, that's how you know how long it takes. So I'm just going to go over here because time doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to use these. See, that's not right. I want it to go up. So I'm going to do that until I'm satisfied. I'm going to enable the title action safe. And then until I'm kind of pleased. There you go. That's good enough. Cool. So now you'll notice that it goes up and down, and that's pretty cool. And I believe I covered two um, topics. So item menus, gone over those. Uh, basically, what I just did can be done for all of these. So let me just do scale really quick. So if I do that, you'll notice a keyframe is added. If I go over here and I do this, you'll notice it's now smaller, so it's going to animate like that. All right, so if you want me to show it once again, I can animate the rotation. And these don't, don't have to start all at the beginning. They could You can drag these around. Uh, so if I wanted to start rotating here, and I wanted to rotate, let's say, I don't know, this much, like that. If I wanted to do a full turn, then this would look like that. Actually, let me make it a bit longer. There we go. There you go, look at that. It's looking mighty fancy. So you get the point. If I want to be real fancy, I could enable motion blur. There you go, sound effects. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go over that later. So that is how you animate things. It's very simple. Um, and let's say I wanted to um, animate the position again. I could simply move these numbers and it would animate. But you can also, uh, I keep saying but, but I really mean and. And I can also drag it to the desired position. So you'll notice now I have this sweet little thing. And now this looks like this. Pretty all right, if you ask me. And these dots just show how many frames are between um, each keyframe. So you'll notice here there's a bunch of frames, but if I do this, you'll notice the frames start to get fewer and fewer. Somebody's in my door. All right, so I'm back. Sorry about that if that was a weird cut. So basically, you get the point. You can animate that, and it looks fantastic. Uh, one second. Animation. Cool. So that's basically how you do that. You click on these uh, little um, stopwatches and you basically once they're enabled you can do all kinds of stuff to them so you'll notice now if I go over here and I rotate this wrong thing and I rotate this you'll notice that as soon as I rotate it down here there's gonna be a keyframe that appears so you'll notice as soon as I do that there's a keyframe and that makes it so that it's looks that makes it, it looks pretty cool now, in no way is this, you know, good looking, but that's how animation is done. So, at this point, I'm going to talk briefly about um, keyframe velocity. 
because when I learned about keyframe velocity, I noticed that my stuff started looking a lot better. Uh, so basically, uh, let me just put a little uh, tick next animation. Also, uh, times video is getting pretty long, so once I explain all these points, I'll go through the original video and explain briefly what I did there so that you guys can understand how things were done. Um, so, keyframe velocity. Let me just delete these. So, rotation and scale, I don't want these. So, I just selected them, press delete. So, now all I get is this the position. Um, so I'm gonna delete those. Cool. I'm actually gonna make this smaller. So you'll notice now I scale it down, but there's no keyframes because it's not enabled for animation. And I'm actually gonna move uh, these two keyframes down, like so. There you go. So, and you know what? You know what? Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. I'm gonna put it right there. And basically, I want to show what keyframe velocity is and what it does and why you want it. All right, so these here are linear keyframes. Linear keyframes just basically means that the speed of it is constant. Uh, so let me go into this graph editor. Notice I select them, I click on graph editor, and then it shows me the keyframe. So you'll notice down here, um, it shows me that the speed is constant. This this is like a thousand, so it would be five hundred. So it'd be like a one thousand, like a hundred, somewhere around there. You'll notice that it goes. The speed of it is one thousand one hundred approx, and in the middle it's one thousand one hundred approx, and at the end it's one thousand one hundred. Uh, so the speed stays the same, which gets the job done, but doesn't look very nice. Now, if you select both of these and press F9, you'll notice that the, the shape changes. And basically what happens is, you'll notice that now the speed varies. So it starts at zero, and then it gradually goes up to full speed, and it slows down. And you'll notice that this looks a lot nicer. So it has a much more natural feel to it. Um, so you can actually change your keyframes to, uh, I believe they're called easy ease. Uh, but you can change your keyframes to these by pressing F9, and your animations will look a lot smoother. Cool, and I'll actually enable motion blur. Now, this is another tutorial, I guess, on motion blur. Basically, if you want to get motion blur in your video, um, all you got to do is go down here where it says motion blur, enable that so that this layer has it. So you'll notice this uh, pale blue solid doesn't have motion blur, but this one does. But now you notice it's not being blurred whatsoever because up here, it's not enabled. So as soon as I enable that, you'll notice that it gets blurry. And so, uh, there we go. That's how you do that. So I'll actually get them a bit closer to get a bit more of a speed feeling. There you go. So that's how you do that. You can actually, once you get these easy ease keyframes, now I'm going over the this velocity and all that. Um, if you select the keyframes that you want to adjust the speed of, you can select them, click on the graph editor, and then by clicking one of these two squares, it allows you to adjust the curve of the speed. So you can actually do something like that, so that it starts off slow and then it picks up speed really fast, and then it slows down. It comes to a halt but very slowly. So you can actually notice the keyframes here. You'll notice that there's a keyframe there, there, and the next one is all the way over there. So right there, then there's a big jump, and then there's a really big jump, and then the jumps start getting smaller and smaller. So by animating this, you can actually create all kinds of movements. So over here, you'll notice there's keyframe, keyframe, keyframe. There's kind of there's a bit of a gap, then there's a huge gap, and then it goes back down. And that creates a very fast sort of whooshing effect, which you know looks pretty cool. So, if you ever wondered how to get this kind of effect with your animations, 
that's how you do it. You select your keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease. Go into graph editor and edit the curves. Now here's a cool uh, style that's going around. It's by making the curve like this so it goes pretty quick, right? And then what you do is you'll actually do something like that and then create a keyframe between these and then do that so it kind of snaps into place and you'll notice it's a very interesting it's a very interesting uh, motion it's great for like rotation and it, it, it's a very it's a very modern thing right now uh, so let's go in rotation right let's make it rotate right there it's gonna go like that and then I'm gonna select this rotation and then I'm gonna rotate and hold down shift so it snaps like that that's fine now once again I'm just gonna select these F9 go in the graph editor grab this like that like that I'm actually gonna spread those out a bit do that create a keyframe and drag that over and now there you go so it's a very snappy motion and basically what I'm trying to show is that by doing this very simple tweaking of keyframes you can get very nice looking animations so before this video gets crazy long uh, let me just put a tick on that masking uh, I don't know I don't even know if I should cover this in this tutorial because it's so long uh, so I apologize for the misleading uh, intro video we will not be covering masking in this tutorial uh, because I feel like this tutorial um, showing animation is plenty for now. Uh, anything else? Right, okay, so having shown you this, i pretty much shown you how I made this entire video. So you'll notice the square um, is the same as I did, right, for this. It moves from one side to the other, right, the same as that. So you know how to do that. Next up, the, the words, same as the square, it moves from one side to the other. Um, the rectangles over here uh, moves and shrinks, which you know how to do that because you know how to animate the position and the scale. And I believe, did I, did I, I'm asking you as if you're gonna answer, but if you'll notice that if I increase the scale, it scales up uniformly. If I, deselect this chain you'll notice that the numbers don't grow together anymore so with the chain without the chain and you'll notice that this adjusts just uh, one of these two uh, axes no not axes anyway you can adjust only one of them if this is deselected uh, so I was showing that because reasons right because this starts as starts up as a rectangle and then becomes a square so you can actually animate this to become a square and that's how you do it uh next up also these the way they move you know how that's done because i've shown you how to make these keyframes um there we go uh yeah this has to do with masking so next episode i guess i'll show you how to make these cool rings and same as, as everything else, the text, the way it bounces up and down, that's with the scale. And then these two bars are done with masking. But the mask has been animated using those same keyframes with the speed uh, animated. Because you'll notice here, they, they go pretty quick and then they slow down until they stop moving. So basically, everything I've shown you so far would allow you to recreate a video that is pretty similar to this one aside from the couple masking techniques that I haven't shown yet but that is about it uh, I hope this video isn't too long I'm aiming for around 10 minutes under there so I apologize if it went over that <laughs> sorry about that I was done recording and then I realized that I didn't show you this very important last step uh, so using After Effects will take up a ton of space on your computer uh, because its temporary folder gets big really fast. So what you want to do once you're done is um, press Windows, the Windows key, and R to bring up the run, and then type in 
percent temp percent press ok and then you'll notice this after effects disk sorry after effects disk uh gets pretty big but because i was working with only uh solids it's not going to be that big so right now it's just 181 megabytes but i have done projects that by the end of it my after effects folder would be like 20 gigs and it's just temporary folders so by the by by the time you're done what you want to do is usually delete your whole temp folder because it's just temporary stuff and whatever is needed is not going to let you delete it so it's just good to delete everything and you'll see so press shift delete to permanently delete it instead of just moving it to the recycle bin press ok and then see I can't delete this so do this for all and then skip so now I just deleted the after effects temp so yeah uh, once again if you don't do that and you do a big project you'll probably end up with like 20 gigs just sitting there on your hard drive join me in the next video where I show you how to do something else that will allow you to progress and become better at after effects quicker than you would if you were just looking for random tutorials on how to do very specific things. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching once again, and I hope to see you in the next video. So remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, have a nice day. Until then.